I want me some ice cream and I want it now. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and happy Thanksgiving. Now, I had thought about carving a turkey for today, but I thought I'd do the second best thing, and that is an ice cream scoop, uh, because it, what would it be without ice cream on uh, Thanksgiving? So, yeah, I'm gonna be making two ice cream scoops because, well, I have two hands, and I like ice cream. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna be making it on these spring pole lathe. So this is a reciprocating lathe, so it spins one way and then spins the other way. If you wanna see how I made it and uh, the things I've been doing on it, you can see a link to that down below. And uh, yeah, let's dive in and have a little bit of fun. So let's start this out where I like to start all my videos with my all-time favorite wood, African blackwood. <laughs> okay, yeah, I per picked up this piece about an inch and a half by inch and a half by about a foot long at uh, WIA, oh, almost a year and a half ago now. And uh, I have been holding on to this for just such an occasion. And this is special enough for it that I want to, uh, well, let's use the good wood. Now I'm going to bore a hole in either end for the tang of the scoop to fit into. And you noticed earlier I, drilled a cir I drew a circle on the end. That circle will then be a reference so that I can get this kind of to a round shape. And speaking of that, I'm going to put it in the vise and then plane it down. And uh, basically turning it into an octagon. That makes it a lot easier for this particular lathe because uh, you don't have to spend all your time hitting all those corners. And that can take a lot of force. So I like to get rid of those corners, it just makes it a lot easier. Once I have that octagonal shape, I can chalk it up in the vise and start going to town and experimenting. And as I'm still getting used to the, uh, the spring pole lathe as opposed to the electrical lathe, uh, I'm trying to learn things and play around with it. And with African blackwood, it is extremely hard, and so I had to learn a few things up front. And the traditional tools worked, but they were slower than the carbide tools. And so for most of this, I ended up using my uh, carbide set. These are from uh, Rockler. I'll leave a link to them down below, but they really marched through this hardwood and left a fairly nice surface. I was very pleased with them. They're basically scrapers, but they work fairly well. So what I want to do is ring down at several points until it becomes round, and that just kind of gives me a visual cue for where round is. The next thing I need to do is actually adjust the pole so that the cord now runs in the middle of the work as opposed to right out on the end. This will allow me to work on both ends of it so that I can create two handles at one time. The next thing I need to do is just finish out the rounding, and then we can start working on the tenons. On these particular ones, there's a ferrule that will go over the end, and I need to round down about a half inch of the end so that the ferrule will slide on. So I'm going to be going at that with the square head, and then I'll check it with the calipers occasionally, and then go back to town until I get it down to the size it needs to be. Really ended up only taking about a minute or so on either end, and then it fit in perfectly. And I was very happy with the, the fit on the, the ferrule. The next thing I need to do is create the handle shape. Now here I have it set up so you can see one half that's already done and the other half that I'm about to do. I'm going to be creating a, uh, a cove on either end that comes up to a, uh, well, basically a pointed ridge. So I'm going to be using the round carbide tool to clean out this space. And I'll basically be creating two of these coves side by side to create that ring that uh, we want to see up by the handle. Once I have that ring basically shaped and what I'm looking for, then we can start on hogging out all the other material by the, uh, the rest of the handle. I'm going to start uh, by going in at the deepest point and creating that deepest point location. Uh, that will allow me to then fill it in from either end and uh, well, carve out the shape I want. Once I have that deepest point lo located, then I'm going to come back to the butt and start working in from there and taper in from that point to the deepest location. And so I'm, I'm just slowly working my way from one end to the other and taking down the material and trying to keep an even line um, as I go along. It actually was a lot of fun and a lot quicker than I was expecting, especially with this hardwood. I was expecting it to be very difficult, but it really wasn't. Then I can do the exact same thing up from the, uh, the fillet that I put in and start working my way back towards that deepest location and basically shaping out that slight curve to match what I had done on the other side. Once that is done and I'm happy with the shape, then I can start in on the sanding. 
And holy cow, this uh, this hardwood did not like sanding. It took quite a bit of work to get it down. Uh, but after getting into that a good ways, then I could uh, I could move on to actually sh sculpting the butt. But before I actually want to sculpt the butt, I want to create this small space in between the two handles, uh, creating a cove that the uh, the cord can wrap around. And that way I can finish the two handles and uh, have the cord on the middle rather than having it on the two handles. Then I'm going to use the detail tool of the, uh, the carbide set and come in right around the butt and that'll allow me to get really nice and close. I'm going to go up to about a half inch or so away. Um, and that's enough material that it will it'll still have enough strength. Then I can move that cord over to the middle location and then start hitting the micro mesh and working my way up through all the grits on that. I really didn't want to do a, uh, a CA finish on this like I've done in the past and I just wanted to have like a raw wood and wax finish basically. So I want this to be really nice and buffed out and uh, using the micro mesh makes that very easy. Once I run through the micro mesh I'm going to use a tacky cloth. This is basically a wax infused cheesecloth and uh, it, it starts the finishing process by transferring the wax when you heat it up from the friction but also it polishes at the same time and I really like using this just to get that nice absolute beautiful sheen um, it's just one of those, those fun things yeah tacky cloth I'll leave a link to it down below if you don't know what I'm talking about but once I'm done with that I am going to move on to one more step which is adding paste wax and I'm just going to buff the paste wax in just give it a nice clean coat let my fingers do the work and then let it sit. I'll let it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour, let it kind of cure up and harden, and then come back in with a rag and buff out the paste wax. And that just brings everything to a really nice high gloss shine um, that I'm very happy with. This is just wood and wax. There's really no build-up finish on there. It's really important to drop the handle on the floor. That really helps the finish. It just kind of brings things together. The next thing I need to do after cutting it off is to sand off the ends. Uh, I'm going to start with a, with a sanding pad and just kind of buff those down. And then I'm going to march into the micro mesh and basically do the exact same thing but do it by hand. Uh, it takes a little bit of time but it's well worth it if you, uh, if you do it well. And uh, buff it all out, shine it out, and yeah, I've got a really nice glossy handle. The last thing to do is epoxy in the scoop and the, uh, the, the collar and they just go in together. Um, not much to say other than fit it together and glue it in place. Um, as this one kind of creates a ram pressure, um, I just wanted to hold it in place while the five minute epoxy set. So I just put it in the vise and uh, clamped it down. And voila, we have an ice cream scoop. And I'm really happy with this uh, practice test. It really came out a lot better than I was expecting. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have and as much as I am about to. <laughs> I'm really having a lot of fun with this and just kind of experimenting with a few different things. One of the reasons why I wanted to try this today is I wanted to try a wood that is very, very hard. And uh, African black wood is one of those woods. So yes, this was a, an enjoyable time to experiment and try some new things. I've got a few other small projects I'm going to experiment with and we'll be doing a few other things with this lathe here soon. So I hope you enjoyed this. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys really are the reason why I can keep making these videos. I don't have any sponsors and I just like doing things that you guys like. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you can find the link right down here. Look at Patreon. Maybe you want to help out. That'd be awesome. Also, if you want to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, <laughs> have a wonderful day.